Uh, what is it like being on road half the time? Like, how do you how do you uh, structure your time being in the ring and being away from your home versus uh, how do you relax off of that when you uh, have your downtime? I, I, yeah, I know it's challenging for some guys. For me, I, I just focus on you know day to day. You know, as long as I could get my working my my workouts in, my training in ring trainings in in a weekly basis. You know, two to three times a week as far as in a ring, five t- five days a week in a gym. Uh, besides that, you know, I, I, it doesn't really matter to me. You know, I could go with no sleep. I could go with little sleep. Uh, I don't really focus too much on that because I think mentally that drains you more is worrying about comfort and am I getting enough rest and I got this tomorrow. So when you focus too much on the little things, your stress level goes up uh, and that affects you. So I try not to worry about it. I try to worry day by day and just focus on what I'm doing, focus on what the agenda is for the day. Uh, and it's it's not a bad deal for me, to be honest. Okay, because I know that there's like a couple people in the industry that do have a hard time balancing it, but you seem to have it very well managed. Well, it's it's one of those things that, you know, sometimes, obviously, even myself, I find myself complaining sometimes about little things, but when you look at it from the big picture, like, who are we to complain about anything when we're getting paid to live out our dream, we're getting paid to travel the world? Uh, I, can't, I can't really sit there and complain and, and struggle too much with it. You know, so whenever I do feel any stress or I feel like it's getting hard, I take a step back and I think about those things and it makes it go so much easier. Okay, I totally agree with that. So we had uh, Will Ferrara on last week and I asked him who's his favorite person to have in the ring to just absolutely destroy. Like someone he go, can go in the ring with and knows he's going to absolutely beat into the dirt. So I'm going to ask you pretty much the same question. Who, like, I mean, pretty much only anybody if they go in the ring with who's going to be in the dirt, but is there anyone in particular you like beating the crap out of? Good one. He said, his, fa- like he said his favorite was cheeseburger. Of course. I would have <laughs> said up until last week or two weeks ago it would have been Jay White, but uh, I'm done with that. So I'm actually in, in the hunt for my, my next victim that I'm going to enjoy beating up. Okay, maybe, uh, maybe Osprey like, seems to be yeah, number one on the list say, right now. Let's say, well, Osprey better watch his back. Junior heavyweight versus super heavyweight. I don't know. You can't go against a guy who's really, really big. You know, and I look forward to it because he's been making such a big name for himself, especially just coming off that big win in Japan. Uh, so I look forward in making a statement where um, things like that are not going to affect my performance. Uh, and I look forward to the meeting with him because I know it's going to turn a lot of heads and people are going to be like, wow, I keep forgetting how good this guy really is. So that's so he is right now my first goal as far as bringing the pain to, you know what I mean? Oh, no, absolutely. So I'm going to have uh, my good friend Jake, who is a sports commentator here on WBNY, I'm going to have him give us a pre-assessment, a preview of this match. And what that is is I'm going to give him this, your stats in weight and height, and he's going to pick a winner. So he's just going to shoot off. So, Jake, so <laughs> yes. Punishment Martinez, and structure your words very carefully, uh, is 6'7", and he clocks in at 251, and he is facing Will Ospreay, who is 6'1 himself, so he's not short. But he is a 175. So if you yeah, have a hot take, like you're that. giving you a hot take right yeah, now. Who do you take? got? Because my money's on my money's on PM every every time. I gotta go with punishment. You, you, yeah. <laughs> I think that was the correct answer. Holy cow! <laughs> <laughs> I think that was the correct answer. What do you think, um, uh, punishment? I like it because you <laughs> put a good big man and a bu- good little man in a ring. The big man is going to win every time. It doesn't matter how many flips and tie bow and whatever else he learned how to do. It's not going to help him in the ring with me. Absolutely, I, I, he I, he must be quaking in his boots, man. They're those those shiny, spinny boots. He must be quaking right now. <laughs> <laughs> what are your favorite match types in particular, Jake? So, what are your favorite match types? In terms of, of in terms of when you, if you're a spectator watching, what are your like steel cage, oh, multi man? I, I always love. Uh... I always love the Money in the Bank ladder matches. So I don't know why. It's the ladder matches or like the so a ladder matches. Or like triple threats, four ways. So, Punishment, I'm going to swing this to you. What are your favorite matches to be in? I mean, I like a street fight because, you know, basically no disqualification fight because you could add all those elements, whether it's a TLC, tables, chairs, you know, they're all legal. So you could use all of them in the match. So my favorite would be a street fight because – it's a, basically a combination of every match you could think of because we could use everything if we want. Exactly. Um, so that. ideally, that's my my type of fight. I just come out in my normal clothes I would wear every day. 
uh, as I would in the street and just put a beating on somebody like I would in the street. <laughs> Oh man, just I have the picture. I I I know who you are. I watch Ring of Iron TV, and I all just picture you, this big mean dude. And I'm like, him just saying this scares the crap out of me because I am a small man. I'm only five eight. I'm smaller than you. Yeah, Jake is shockingly smaller than I am. So <laughs> as much as I respect you, you are terrifying, sir. <laughs> well, for for not for nothing, but it's for good reason. You know, the name Punishment wasn't a name that I thought it was clever, and I came up with. Um, it, it was since I was a kid, I've been referred to as either the Punisher or the Punishment um, because of things that I did outside in the street. So I had that name years and years before I even thought of becoming a professional wrestler. Yeah, so, so uh, that was actually the great segue, great foresight. I was actually going to ask you, so when in, uh, uh, when in your life did you decide, hey, this pro wrestling thing, the pro wrestling might be a thing I want to get into? Well, I used to fight. Uh, martial arts wise, um, and I used to teach and, and whatnot. And I trained under my father, and I did that, and I, that was my main focus in my teens. You know, uh, and, and as a kid, I always with my friends would always talk about it'd be cool to become professional wrestlers one day. You know, and see yourselves on TV and whatnot. So the idea was always there. It was it was just a cool idea. Uh, but it didn't come to fruition until one day. Basically, a buddy of mine was like, "Hey, why don't we actually do it?" And uh, so we went, we signed up to a professional wrestling school, and well, the rest was history. And that school was the, uh, I believe, uh, let me see, that was uh, Monster Factory? Yep. I believe. And can you tell me a little bit about the Monster Factory uh, system and how it prepared you to be in a venue like Ring of Honor? Well, I mean, it's changed since I started. Um, the school itself, it's moved and it has new ownership, and I'm actually one of the trainers there now. Okay, But it good. gives you... It gives you the full uh, career type of training for this business, not just, hey, we're going to teach you how to do moves, you know, so you learn the ins and outs of everything that has to do with professional wrestling, the, the, the ins and outs of how to train your body, not just to do moves or take moves, but like how to train it to look a certain way to present yourself like a star. Um, it's, it's a building that's full of amateur mats, has a full weight room. It's, it's a pretty much a mini performance center. Uh, and we focus on careers, not just teaching you how to do in-ring moves. Oh, that's great. Uh, so uh, moving on to the next topic is you had a heated rivalry with uh, former Ring of Honor champions and former NGW World Tag Champions, uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling Tag Champions, War Machine. What was that like being in the ring with guys who are basically your same size? That was fun uh, because I, I'm, I'm a very physical person. I've always been, so... For me to work with them, it was a lot of fun because I knew that every everything I would bring, they would too. Uh, and and I, like I said, I enjoy that. I really do. Like that, them hitting me in the face would make me happy. So those were a pleasure. Plus, those guys are obviously super talented. That's why they're in the positions that they are, and they've won the championships that they have. Is because of their talent and their ability to just uh, keep moving forward when you think it, it should be over. Um, so that, those were very, very much enjoyable and, and a learning experience too, because we're working with those guys and their caliber of uh, the athletes that they are, um, and makes you step up your game. Oh no, definitely. So we, it's like, it's like a, it's like a sword. It's basically like a knife carving. It's like a sword making another sword sharper in a way. Basically, basically. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I totally understand that we make each other here sharp at WBY. Isn't that right, Jake? Who's on a cell phone? Yep. You're, you're not listening to Punishment Martinez, oh, seriously? You no, kidding? you're not. You're well, on your cell phone. I can't phone. tweet it? You can tweet about it, absolutely, but not on his time. <laughs> not on this man's time. Fine. Fine. Is, is, is that okay to be on his phone? I don't think so. What do you think? As long as he's putting me over. As long as, you're, <laughs> as long as you're putting him over. Absolutely. So tweet out using the WBNY and see what we get from Twitter. If mm-hmm. they... if we get any of the fans on Twitter that want to interview that want to question a punishment is my next question for you buddy is um yeah. oh my god I had it right here and now it's not in front of me because of Jake so yeah. when you're in a tag match what is it vers- oh, what is it different from you when you're in a singles match because you're a big physical guy that really doesn't have to rely on anybody so what is how is that different from when you are in a tag match well, that's the, the difference, you know, uh, in a tag match, we're obviously relying on each other. So we feed off of each other, you know, each other's energy, each other's passion, uh, uh, aggression. 
So, and we try to be a cohesive unit and complement each other. While in a singles match, I really don't care what, you know, uh, the, uh, my only focus is just to stomp somebody's, you know, head to the ground. While in a tag match, I got to worry about my partner, you know. So I definitely enjoy singles a lot more because I don't have to depend on others. Uh, if I lose, it's on me. If I win, it's on me. Um, so that that's the main difference between a singles and tag. Not to say I don't enjoy tag uh, tag team wrestling because I've had championships in the independence all over with different partners. Um, but if I had a choice, I'd definitely choose singles, like I said, because it's all on me. And I enjoy that um, that pressure where it's all on me. Is that, no, I totally understand. I, I completely get that uh, working here where I kind of have to rely on myself because Jake's on his phone again. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> no, so uh, your finisher, Langle South of Heaven, is very devastating. And I don't think Will Ospreay's tiny little back is going to be able to take it. So no, what, 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 is, what is it like hitting with somebody with that and just the sensation, one, two, three, it's over? Like, can you describe how, like, I don't, I, in a way, can you understand how much pain you're putting them in? I, well, at that point, they're, they're not feeling anything. It's lights out. You know, up until that point, obviously, it's picture yourself being set on fire. Uh, and that's, that's the agony that I'm going to try to put you through in a match. And then once I hit my South of Heaven choke slam, it lights out. You don't have to worry about pain. You don't have to worry about the struggle anymore. You just got to worry about where you're going to wake up. Yeah. So I'm going to get a live reaction. This is Jake doesn't know what your finisher is. So I have it right here in front of him. I'm going to have Jake give his synopsis. This is the first time he's seen it. I've seen it plenty of times, but this is Jake's first. Here you go, Jake. Live cool. reaction. I want to see a unique uh, finisher here. Silence and... I like it. I do. That's something new. I've, that is definitely something new. Does it look terrifying? Would you take that? Oh, my God. you got to pay me for that. <laughs> Good thing the guy taking it is getting paid, but probably is not as much as PM over here. <laughs> Well, that's the good thing. I get paid to do it. <laughs> he gets paid to do it. Jake, if I gave you 20 bucks, would you take it? Yes. See? Oh. <laughs> oh. He's yes. going to be in town on Thursday. Uh, if you have time, stop by the studio. We'll put it. We'll put him through a table that way. <laughs> hey, if you guys are making this happen, I'll, uh, I'll show up and uh, put him through we, a table. We got a table. I have $20, and Jake said he'll do it. Oh, man, business just picked up. <laughs> I don't think you, Jake, I don't think you want this. I think you're tracking for more than you could chew, buddy. What I get myself into? <laughs> <laughs> so we'll definitely have to talk, and we'll let everybody know if uh, we'll have PM in studio Thursday. No guarantees, but I think he's interested. Definitely interested. I always love uh, making people regret what they think they want. <laughs> Jake, you're so screwed. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, so, uh, speaking of in town, so what can we expect to see here in Buffalo? Like, this is my first Ring of Honor show that I'm actually live attending. So, what, as like, someone who hasn't seen it before, because we have a guy, Ring of Honor hasn't been the actual show in Buffalo. I looked it up almost seven years. So, a lot of fans who are of, of Ring of Honor in the area, it's their first show that they're going to. What can we expect? Well, the moniker of the best wrestling on the planet is not just a cool uh, slogan. Um, there's a reason for that. It's because we take pride in what we do. We take pride in making sure that we deliver that. So if you've been to other wrestling shows, they will not compare to this. I mean, everybody sets out to steal the show. Everybody sets out as a unit to make this show the best. Every single show, we, ha we try to make it the best show possible. So guaranteed, you will be entertained. You will be awed. Uh, and you will enjoy the night of, you know, like I said, of the best professional wrestling. That is for sure. By for, there's no one that comes close. And, and then on top of that, you're going to have guys from New Japan. So then now we're integrating different styles with the best of the best. Uh, so expect a phenomenal show. And like I said, expect uh, Osprey to, <laughs> to be visually uh, slung and thrown around. That's a, such a to speak on that. This is such a conflicting of styles, like you say. It's that high fly aerial style versus a man who will physically put you through the ringer. Like that, that's the, me lightly saying he's going to kill you. Yeah, that's the thing. Like I, I consider myself a hybrid of styles. Uh, so if, if I have to fly, I'll fly. If I have to mat wrestle, I'll do that. If I have to do submissions, I'll do that. If we're throwing kicks and some, kicks and punches, 
well, you're definitely going to lose in that, and, and you know, in that aspect. But I, I, I'm a hybrid of all styles. So whatever I feel the need for the moment, uh, I'll do it. And uh, I, I think that's where that's going to show the difference between let's say an Osprey and I, you know, with that junior heavyweight to a heavyweight, where while he what he does he does a lot of impressive moves. Well, so do I. But what's the difference is that I can do things to him that he cannot do to me. Exactly. That's one of the scariest things I see in professional wrestling. When a big man flies, it's just like a a big man doing a kick up, a big man doing anything off the top rope that you don't expect him to do. Like not even just a splash, like like you a flip and everything. It's just remarkable at that size. Yeah, and I enjoy it. I enjoy the feeling. I enjoy the feeling of that car crash. So it should be good. So when you're meeting, so if you're meeting someone for the first time and you're socially, and they tell and you tell them you're a professional wrestler, what do you get from that? Like, what are what are people's reactions? Or are they like, oh, of course you're pro, so you think? Or the common thing I get, like, if I tell someone I'm a professional wrestling fan, it's not real. I'm like, ah, take something yeah, away really and tell me. It's not, tell me something. Yeah, tell me something else. I, lucky for me, I don't really get to those too much. You know, okay. with, uh, I'm not real because. Uh, the few that have then regretted their words. But besides that, um, no, usually, usually it's a look of that makes sense. <laughs> you know, when they look at me, they're like, okay, that makes sense. Um, but for the most part, I, I usually get asked a question as far as what do you do? Or it's because they figure I do something, you know, that no, the most normal people don't. So when I say I'm a professional wrestler, they're like, okay, that makes sense. We understand because they figured that I did something, you know, unusual. Um, so, yeah, I don't really get the too much of the negative side where, you know, oh, that's fake and stuff, because I think most people are a little intimidated, uh, to say the least. <laughs> <laughs> I'm intimidated, but, and I'm and, but that's, you and like right I now. said, those are rare anyway. Those are rare instances. It's not like just people love coming up to me and, and strangers and, and speaking to me. And usually people yeah. stay, uh, they usually stay away from me anyway. Nobody likes to talk to me or bring up, pull up a conversation because... I don't. I don't look like the most personable person. So, <laughs> you're thousands yeah. of miles away from me, and I'm terrified right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can, well, just, that means I'm you doing can my hear job. it in his voice. <laughs> so, uh, speaking of being uh, sort of a lone wolf, for, uh, should I say, as you just hinted on? So, who are your closest friends in the industry? Uh, QT Marshall, Matt Riddle. Uh, I mean, it, it, it ranges, you know. Yeah. But those those are probably the two current pro wrestlers that I'm closest to. Yeah, Matt you know. Riddle's just tearing it up in uh, the UK right now. Yeah, yeah. And I and I take pride that he was one of my students. I train I helped train Matt Riddle. And uh so and we used to have a faction together, Riddle and Q T Marshall and I. Nice. So we, we you know we traveled the roads a lot. We were together a lot. So we got we came really close. So I would say those are my closest friends as far as like. See that like makes said, sense because you 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 do have the, the, now that I'm now that you said that I'm th- I'm looking I'm thinking back I'm like man you do have very similar styles and I do see a lot of him in uh, a lot of you in him so I was like really just think looking back because uh, I have friends in the UK who have met him and he's just like he puts you over every time he talks about you. Well, that's cool, you know, and like I said, but we're, it's not like one of those things where we do it because we feel the need to. We're actually friends. We get along. Uh, as somebody we we talk to on a regular basis, we'll send messages to each other, um, just about whatever. Yeah, not necessarily just on wrestling. You know, it's just somebody that we're close to, and like I said, a QT Marshall as well, who will also help train him. Um, so yeah, I would say those two are the closest that, that I get along with. And then, but then because we don't always work together, like Riddle and I haven't been on a show in probably close to two years yeah. together. So you know, and QT Marshall is here and there. So, you know, you find different people to ride with and, and get along with and get close to um, traveling buddies and whatnot or guys that, you know, you're pretty much looking to make, you know, start some trouble with. You know, <laughs> right now, Jay Briscoe is one of the guys that I kind of like nice. hanging in, that we kind of stick together. Uh, BJ Whitmer and, with you know, the, the history that we have, we, we got close. And even when we didn't seem to really get along, uh, we still have that connection. You know, with Kevin Sullivan and everything that we get along with, so nice. You know, like I said, there's different guys that you 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 learn to bond with, so to speak. When you, especially when you're on the road for so long, and you know, and you you're away from family and and your normal friends, uh, you find you find different bonds. No, that's awesome. Uh, the next thing I want to touch on is who are some of your greatest 
influences or had the biggest impact to you and you on your life? Not even in professional wrestling sense, but you as a person. Uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't say my father. You know, he taught me how to fight, you know, and made me into the person pretty much as far as, like, the stand-up, you know, tough, fear-nothing guy. You know, that was all from my father since I'm from a young age. He instilling instilling that in me. Um, especially, like I said, the physical aspect of what I do. Uh, I don't think it was for him. I wouldn't do, be doing anything physical. So, uh, and then, you know, in, in the business, you know, guys that got me the reasons why I, I love the business and everything, Undertaker would be weird not to say his name because there's I was, there's apparent similarities and, and there are purposely some similarities. You know, I pay tribute to him basically by some of the things I do or some of the mannerisms I make or facial expressions or gear. It's all a tribute to a guy that I looked up to for so long and basically made me want to be in this business, you know, and I could, and I can name others too, but he would be the number one guy as far as that goes. Nice. So what did you think of uh, his uh, loss at WrestleMania this year? His what? Uh, the Undertaker's match at WrestleMania this past year. Uh, I thought it was all right. You know, he's, he's getting up there. So it's really what to, it's what you would expect, yeah. you know? Um, I think with him now, it's more, it's cool to see him still get in the ring. It's still cool to see his entrance and, you know, just his presence and his, all the aura that surrounds him. It's still cool to see. So Absolutely. the match itself, I really could care less and, you know, I could care less about the outcome. It's yeah. still, no matter how old he gets or, or where he's at in his life, it's still cool to see him as yeah. the undertaker, you it's know, a, it's, it's still a cool sight. That he has about him. The way he yeah, just, exactly. the, way, the way he walks, the way, the way he looks at you, it's just like when he turned up on SmackDown uh, before Survivor Series. It was, it, I, I was at that one. It was just a chilling feeling. It was my first time seeing him live. Yeah, it has and nothing it was, to do with wins or losses or moves or. No, it does not. It's just him, the person. So yeah, it's still cool to see him. So I, like I said, the match itself, whatever. Uh, I, you know, I, I, ha I can have an opinion on it, but. My main opinion is just on the person, and I, I still, to this day, enjoy seeing him, you know, do his thing. Okay, and so the next question is, so outside of Ring of Honor, who would you like to wrestle the most? It could be past, present, excluding The Undertaker at this point. Excluding or including? I, I, I excluding, because obviously I would also say The Undertaker. Yeah, man, that's rough, because, like, today, I, the, the one guy, uh, well, there, there's two guys, really, today that, the, at the top of the list, which would be... AJ Styles and Kenny Omega. Nice. Those are two guys that I know you give me 30, 30 minutes to an hour in the ring with them, and it'll be something special. Nice. Like, I have no doubt about that. And, you, you take um, a, and then, I, I mean, I've had my, my guys that I've always, like, studied and looked up to as far as, like, Sting, Scott Hall. Um, I, I would be ridiculous if I didn't say Shawn Michaels, just because I, that would be amazing, you know, back in his heyday, you know, to put on a, a performance with him. Um you know, even guys like smaller guys like X Pac, who I also took things out and made them into my own, as far as because he was into martial arts and whatnot. You know, so yep. uh, it it was just like there's a lot of guys, but I would think that excluding Undertaker and going like at any time, I think those you know like Sting, Razor, you know, guys like that, Mister Perfect, they're just on the top of the list. But there's so many, it's hard to tell. So I'd rather just stick with guys that could possibly happen, which would be. Styles and uh, and uh, Omega, that for sure. Oh, Omega's got uh, Omega's gonna be there Thursday. He better watch his back. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, but he's got his thing going on. I got my thing going on. Exactly. So right now, he's he's clear of danger it's at the like, moment. It's not in the cars, but he just gotta keep keep an eye out over his shoulder. Of course, but as far as like what my concerns right now, and if I have to go with you know people in New Japan, I think Los Ingobernables is the Japón, You know. Especially with their leader, who I'm, yeah. I, I still have unfinished business with. Uh, that's, this, so yeah. that's actually Naito. my fantasy football team name. Yeah, yeah well, we have a couple, I, I we have still have unfinished business yeah. with him. So yeah. Naito, yep. Don't, yeah, yeah. So those would be my my focuses as far as like New Japan guys right now. It's more of that that group than anybody in the Bullet Club. Nice, nice. I get that. It's just it's, it's the way he he's so he's so dynamic in Japan. It's just a good. He walks and people just drop. It's just, oh, yeah. it's insane. Yeah, but big time. He has like that, he has a cool swag to him that uh, just oozes charisma and and people can feel it. 
Yeah, no. So, but we're speaking on that, like the locker room. I, I was looking. Uh, I showed my buddy the card yesterday, the uh, the other day, uh, who I do a podcast with for wrestling, and he was like, "Now I need to get tickets." And fortunately, the Buffalo show, unfortunately, people, it is sold out. It's wrapped up yep. on tickets, and you're not you're not gonna get a ticket. Um, he saw the card and was like, "How is this possible?" So it's just because the Ring of Honor is that good. They attract so many great wrestlers like Punish Martin Martinez, like Kenny Omega. They it just, it, they it just, it's a magnet. It's a hotbed for wrestling. So to be in that locker room, what's that feeling like? It's awesome. Uh, and like I was saying before about like the the, the mentality and the, the talent, and you know, the one thing is that not to say that this is the way it's done because it's definitely not, but especially when you have these global war tours or war of the world tours you could literally take names and put them in a in a bucket and throw them around and just grab two names and say this is going to be the next match and it's going to be a great match because that's what both companies demand from their talent is is you know top notch quality performances and when they put these cards together and then you have new japan and ring of honor actually sitting down and coming up with a card and like they're actually putting thought into it then it's i mean it's these fantasy cards that it's like, is this real? Um, is this really happening? Because uh, it just seems like all these either dream matches or, you know, just these crazy matchups. Like, not for nothing, Osprey and I, it's a crazy matchup. Like, it's something that most people wouldn't even think of because it's just not something you would think it would be possible. Then it all of a sudden it's a match made, and then it's like, wow, that looks, that sounds amazing. Um, and the same goes for the rest of the card. It's not just us. You know, there's just great, great matchups. Um, and like I said, now you got Kenny and the club team together on U.S. soil in Ring of Honor. That's that's just fantasy stuff, you know. So then you could, realistically, you could put them against anybody, but they're putting them against formidable opponents because of the talent that's involved. And now you you, you have something special. And I think that's, the, that's why these cards look the way they do it. It's not something that, you know, it, it's one of those... Uh, it, it kind of flies under the radar a bit. Like the when we have these shows, it, it's always the same reaction. Like, oh my god, can you believe these matchups? Well, it should you should believe in them because that's what you should expect. But yet we still surprise everybody. So which we enjoy. We still enjoy shocking everybody and surprising everybody because then we have these matchups, and sometimes you have this great build and the del- delivery is not what you think, but not the case with us. We actually deliver. So. Oh yeah, totally. So, how does uh, a tour like this differ from like going to weekly tapings or uh, leading up to like big pay per views? How does it differ, prep wise or travel wise? Well, the difference is, I mean, like I said, we we always have our goals to you know put on the best performance possible. But whenever we get these type of tours where we're integrating uh, different companies and the best of the best from not just our company, from different companies from around the world, you know, whether it's New Japan or you know, uh, CMLL or guys from the UK. Now, it, it, it you you stand up, you, you pump your chest up a little bit, and you know, you maybe go a little harder in the gym, thinking about what you can do. And uh, it's definitely it, it makes you not that we need it, but it gives us an extra motivation uh, when we're definitely a little bit more pumped up going into these matches. You know, where we're expecting. Uh, more than usual expecting something special out of each other not out of the fans or anything out of each other we're expecting a little bit more um because of the the scenario the circumstance you know it's kind of a pay-per-view feel on a on a live event you know which is crazy even though these live events will be on i some of them will be on i pay-per-view they will be up for uh, video on demand and dvd sales um and not to say, and we never mail it in but i think with especially with the global wars and world of the world tours and and tours like this we definitely feel a little bit, I wouldn't say pressure, because I don't think, I think this locker room is so talented that we don't really get that type of pressure. If anything, it's good pressure. Uh, but we definitely put, uh, like I said, a little more pep in our step, especially, especially when it comes to the performance aspect. You know, we expect a little bit more out of each other and ourselves. No, absolutely. Uh, you just got to you just, you gotta go through it. You got to push each other and you got to give the best show possible every week. It didn't matter, yeah, no matter definitely. what, no matter if it's a house show, no matter if it's a live event, no matter if it's a pay per view, you're trying to push out the best product and the best wrestling possible. I totally understand that. Yeah, for sure. So, what is it like? Uh, we touched on this a little bit earlier. So, teaching a new generation, being a trainer, like, what is it? How, is that is that feeling 360 from when you started to now? Like, I'm now I'm now helping raising the next generation of people. It's cool. 
you know, and it's it's not just I'm not I'm not I'm gonna be honest. It's not just a a thing where I'm just teaching guys how to you know become professional wrestlers and then they become professional wrestlers. No, it's actually a, a still a, I learn more now than I probably in the all the years that I did training. I learn more now training guys because if I'm preaching it, I got to do it. If I'm teaching it a certain way, it's because I could see it and I could see it clearly and I know how it should be done, how it should look. Uh, and how it could be effective. So if I'm teaching, then I got to do it. Um, so it's, I, I, like I said, I've, I think I've learned either just as much or more now in the past few years as a trainer than I did as a trainee. Because uh, it's just a different way of looking at things. So as much as I enjoy helping guys, you know, follow their dreams and, you know, bringing out the best that, that they can be, and, and it, that's very enjoyable, and, and I, I do enjoy that, but I also... Uh, Selfishly, you know, because to be honest, uh, I enjoy the fact that I still am able to learn and I take it as, even though I'm teaching, I'm taking it as I'm still training. Like that's part of my training is teaching, you know, and, and because I constantly learn. I think every time I'm in, at the school and, and getting in the ring, whether I'm practicing stuff or teaching guys stuff, I feel like every single time I leave with new knowledge. And, uh, and I think that will obviously helps progress. And not only in the business, but especially in Ring of Honor, where you have to consistently evolve and get better and be better and deliver uh, uh, something special. Uh, uh, so it gives me an outlet to learn and create uh, while teaching. No, oh, I totally get that. That's super. That's super understandable and relatable. I totally understand, like the cathartic experience of, hey, I'm training, but I'm also learning this about myself and how can I can apply it to my actual work. And that's like a big takeaway I try to get from these interviews. Like being relatable to the people listening, being relatable to the interviewer, being relatable to the star that I'm talking to is just a great way. And it's also a learning experience at the same time. Getting right, better every exactly. Time. So uh, can we get a quick message to Will Ospreay right now saying, hey, Will, you're going to get crushed this weekend or something like that. Just one final message to him. Ospreay, the aerial assassin will fall. You will fall on my feet. Because I'm coming to break some bones and crack some skulls. And you're first on the list. So, Osprey, bring all the flying you want. Prepare to be punished. Thank you, man. I really do appreciate it. I don't want to take up too much of your time because I'm not worth that time. (laughs) (laughs) So good, man. (laughs) So, uh, we're going to do a quick break, and then I'm going to have you say the legal ID, and then we'll wrap it. You got it. Okay, so that was Punishment Martinez. He'll be right back here on 91.3 FM, WBNY. Keep it locked. Ninety-one point three FM W B N Y Buffalo. One last message from Punishment Martinez. Ninety-one point three FM W B N Y Buffalo. Original alternative since nineteen eighty-two. Brought to you by the Buffalo State Student Activity Free. Tomorrow night, Ring of Honor Global Wars. Osprey goes down to the Messiah of Pain. Thank you very much, Punishment. We will swing it right back to the music right here on ninety-one three W B N Y. Keep it locked. <laughs> 